Jeff from Completely Bored and here we are going for a walk. We're in Boston Common. It's a beautiful summer day, about 85 degrees. And as you can see, everyone's here having a great time. And this episode, episode 5, we're doing something a little different. Um, I'm kind of shooting this the one tar style. For those of you who don't know who the one tar is, go check her out on YouTube. She's awesome. Her name's Tiffany and she does really great game videos and walkthrough videos and Gen Con coverage and all kinds of awesome stuff. And she's really, really cool. Go check her out, the one talk. All right, this is way harder than I thought. This walk and talk stuff that Tiffany does, there's no way I could do this all the time. This is, this is hard. Uh, so I'm just gonna stick to uh, sitting in my dining room with a static camera on me and just leave it at that. So um, the rest of this video, we're gonna be showing you a couple of games that we're gonna be showing in a future episode. And at the end, we're going to do an unboxing of a brand new game that I got today, filled with cards. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to show it to you. Let's go uh, to the table and uh, show you those games. Here we are, back in the dining room, back in my apartment. It's probably where I should stay. Anyway, um, it was fun to do that. You know, why not? Um, so we're going to get to the unboxing in just a second. But first, I'm going to show you a couple of the games um, that I'm going to be uh, showing in a future episode. Um, I have some episodes that are coming that are already done. I have others that I'm still working on and others I haven't even shot yet. And these are some of the ones I haven't shot yet. So one of them is called Brave Rats from Blue Orange Games. It's a small card game, about 16 cards. And you play cards and you're trying to defeat your opponent because of the value on the card. And there are special, um, uh, there are special uh, abilities on the card, very similar to like a Lost Legacy or a uh, Love Letter uh, kind of dynamic. But you can see the cards are really cute. Here's uh, this guy here. You get a feel for that special text on the bottom. So, again, it's a small little game. It fits uh, in this tin not a fan of the tin but maybe in this case it's good because you can take it places and bang on it and it won't get destroyed like a box i'm going to show you later but that's brave rats so that's coming soon uh another one i want to uh, eventually get to uh, a review of is this one oddball aeronauts this is uh the first uh kickstarter that i actually received i have other ones coming some i've already gotten but this is the first one i received and um this is um a card game where you're a particular uh, faction of these anthropomorphic creatures who are very steampunky. And the idea is you are uh, zipping around in airships that look like this. Yep, like that. Oops. And you basically are comparing values on the cards that you can see there in the corner. Um, and uh, you're battling each other, and you can choose between, um, you know, boarding or sailing uh, or cannon or what have you. And you can play the first uh, card or the first and second or the first and third, or you can play all three. And you're comparing values, and there's some special effects and things like that. But one of the, um, the selling points of the cards was that you don't need a table surface. You can just hold the cards in your hand, and you just splay them out to, to, uh, to play them. And if you lose, you know, if you lost, you know, four cards in the attack, you turn the cards around. They go backwards in your hand. So when you splay them out, you can see how much damage you took because these cards are in the back. And uh, so, yeah, that was kind of the selling point that you didn't need a table to play it. You can just play it in your hand while you're waiting in line or what have you. So that's Oddball Aeronauts, and we'll be showing that soon, I hope. Mixed reviews on this, actually, now that I think about it. Um, there's a lot of people who like this game. There's a lot of people who don't. Um, there are some people um, who feel that this is a good start, that maybe um, these guys need to, uh, Maverick Muse needs to make more factions. Um, that uh, Maverick Muse makes, needs to make more expansion and have more cards so you can deck build and, 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 uh, and this can become a whole game system. My son thought this would make an awesome TV series. Uh, he really liked the art on this. It could be an awesome like cartoon series. Who knows? Maybe they'll sell the rights to that. So that's coming. Um, <clears throat> next one uh, is Tahiti. This is a pick up and deliver game. 
where you're going around to different islands and you're picking up bananas and taro and coconut. And uh, I got this in a math trade and uh, I was excited to get it only because you know I really like this Polynesian kind of feel. So I played this with my son, get a review out of this soon, I hope. Uh, next is Nia. This is uh, also from Blue Orange Games. And uh, this is a game I played with my daughter already a couple of times. And uh, it comes with these really nice red tokens like this, as well as black tokens for the other player. And the idea is you are trying to get uh, basically four in a row, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, or four in a cluster. And uh, or preventing your opponent from doing the same. And they have these tiles that uh, are part of the game where it just determines, this is the player board, you know, the, the board that you're playing on, excuse me, and you're uh, putting your pieces down uh, on certain ones. And not to go too much into the gameplay, but <clears throat> uh, we'll get to that. So we're gonna do a review of this uh, eventually. And uh, we're also gonna do a full playthrough of this, I hope. So uh, it's a fun little strategy game. It's not, it's, not a lot of depth, but it's fun, and it's easy to learn, uh, and my daughter seems to like it. Not a favorite game, uh, but she did enjoy it, and the artwork's really nice. So the last game is some of my gamer friends and gaming people out there in the gaming verse are going to cringe when I show you this. <clears throat> this game has a very special place in my collection, a very special place in my heart. It's called Aquarius. It's from Looney Labs. Yeah, I know, I know. Everyone's freaking out now. What are you talking about? You're crazy. Um, I got this 10 years ago. My son used to commute with me a lot on the train when he was younger. He'd come with me to work, and uh, we would need something to do on the train. So I picked this up. Um, I was kind of uh, interested in Chrononauts at the time, which is also made by Looney Labs. It didn't really latch on with me. And uh, I got this one because I thought it would be a game that him and I could play. And uh, basically... Uh, you know, it has various depictions of earth and fire and water and ether, you know, the five elements in this very uh, hippie kind of 70s feel. So um, the cards are really worn. This game is, we, we used to play this game um, probably three times heading into Boston and three or four times heading back. So it's got a lot of use. And uh, we really enjoyed it. And, and the reason it's special to me, not only because I played it with my son when he was younger, but uh, I think this is one of the games that got me back into the hobby, believe it or not. And uh, so it hasn't left my collection. Um, I have yet to introduce it to my daughter, but that will be soon. And that's Aquarius. So hopefully I'll be showing a little bit of review of that, a little bit of gameplay. Um, this has been rethemed, actually, now that I think about it. Um, Looney Labs rethemed it with dragons and called it the Seven Dragons, I believe. It's basically the same game. I think the game. I think there's just a couple of. I think there's just some minor rule changes. No, nothing major, but it's basically the same game, um, just a different theme. So, um, but this one came first, and so like I said, this is very special to me. I still have it. I don't think it's ever going to leave my collection until it completely falls apart. Um, maybe someday I'll get another copy of it just to have it pristine. But the, this has seen a lot of use, so we'll show you a little bit of that. So that's it. That's some of the games that we're going to be showing in future episodes. Um, <clears throat> I encourage you to please subscribe to the channel. Um, give me a thumbs up or give me a thumbs down. Please be honest. Um, I also appreciate any comments you give me. Send me questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, God, maybe we can do a, a Q&A episode. Wouldn't that be something? Um, but please communicate. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. So that's about it for that. So let's take you to the table. We're going to do this special unboxing. Um, I'm really excited about it because I've been waiting for this game for months to come out and I finally got a copy of it. And um, we're going to take you through it and show you everything that's inside the box, okay? Okay, today we're going to unbox this bad guy right here. Uh, my son and I are big fans of Legendary uh, in the Marvel Universe, as well as DC, but Marvel especially. Um, I'm a huge fan of the Alien Universe and um, so if you look on the back here, this is what we're going to see inside. Sorry about the reflection. It is still shrink-wrapped, but we're going to open this thing up right now and take a look at what's inside. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting to, uh, to notice is that the uh, legendary Marvel game is ages 14 and up, and this game is marked on the box right in the front, uh, ages 17 and up. So 
Um, I know what these cards look like. I've already seen them. Um, they are not screen grabs from the film. They are, um, they are more comic book looking, like from the Dark Horse kind of comics, but uh, they are pretty violent, some of the images. So, and hopefully we don't get any more glare. Oh, not too bad. All right, here we go. It's a pretty big box. This is bigger than the legendary box of the, the Marvel game. And here we have your typical rule book, like so. We'll go through a couple pages of this. This is the mat, which we'll see in a minute, which is kind of cool. Um, this is not uh, a, a uh, typical board game board. This is actually a mat, which we'll look at. This is why the box is a little longer than usual. And again, these, these instructions are virtually identical to the Marvel game. Uh, just a couple of changes here and there with regard to gameplay, but there are significant changes, I should say, but they, it is laid out the same way. And some cool alien guys, a lot of text, another one, some nice art. So, cool IP. So, there's your rule book, and extra stuff to keep things from moving around when it gets sh get shipped and moved, so that's kind of cool. So I'll tell you what, before we look at these cards, which there's 600 of these cards, um, 500 came in the Marvel box, 600 comes in this, so it's a little bit more. So first we'll take this out, and we'll show you what that looks, and we'll come back to the box. <sighs> Make some room here. Nice. Wow, I came and fit it on camera. I did not plan on that. I'm zoomed out all the way. Sorry, folks. So here we have some turn order uh, instructions down here. This is the discard uh, discarded hazards and events. Here's your dead enemies, which unfortunately come back to life if you uh, run out of cards, which would be bad. Let's move this up a little bit. Here's your character deck, your barracks, which your, your cards that you can buy come on your HQ, very similar to Marvel. These are your strikes, these are your wounds you're gonna take. And as you can see in the art here, this guy is getting an alien mini skull to his forehead. So maybe you can see why it's 17 and up. There is some pretty uh, gory imagery on this, which my daughter probably shouldn't see, which is why we're doing it after she's in bed. Your discarded strikes go here. Here's your hatchery. This is where your face huggers go, I think. Things like that, and chest bursters and fun stuff like that. This is your hive where all your aliens are. And we'll move this down, like so. As your aliens come out, they actually go face down and they move across. And you have to pay uh, attack points, four, three, three, two, and two, depending upon where they are, to scan it and flip it over and see what the card is. Once a card gets to the airlock, it moves down to the combat zone. And all these, whatever's in here, if there's three cards in here, these are all going to attack you on your turn every single time until you uh, can kill it. Additionally, there's some face huggers uh, which attach to your face, and um, if you don't kill it, your the next player gets a chance. And if they don't kill it, you get a chest burster uh, chest burster uh, card that goes into your deck. You shuffle it up. When that comes up, you're dead, unless you play with the advanced rules, and then you become an alien. So check out those rules. But uh, here's your sergeant, which is very similar to your. Um, uh, to your, oh, I can't remember the name, but your, your generic recruiting cards. If you didn't want to buy anything from the lineup, you can buy one of these. The difference is uh, these are based on uh, the different factions within the, uh, the card sets, and they have some different abilities that can combo up others. So that's a little different than what was before, and they're face down, so you don't know which one you're going to get. Location card goes there, and then your objectives go here. If I'm not mistaken, there's three objectives uh, for each game, and they can get progressively harder. You can do just alien, you can do aliens, alien three, alien four, you can mix and match whatever you want to do. So instead of a board, a hard cardboard board, it's this nice uh, play mat, which I think is really, really sweet. It doesn't slip, it doesn't move. Uh, it's a little big for the camera, and I apologize, but uh, I think this is really cool. Um, this is pretty neat. I've forgotten that this is the reason why the box is bigger, that it comes, uh, that this comes to the box. So that's kind of cool. So let's leave this set up and let's take a look at some cards here. It's a big box, my goodness. Again, we got your typical lame legendary dividers. You know, 
you went through all the trouble to make all these components and make all these cards. Why not make really nice dividers uh, so instead of having the fans do it? And then we have to do a print and play and print them ourselves and uh, on hard stock and, and whatever. It isn't a big deal. You guys could have done it. I don't know why they keep missing the boat on this, but <clears throat> at least I'm glad these are in here, but it'd be nice if they had nice labels up top, right? We all know that. Goes aside. What I'll do is we'll take all these out here. And a lot of these are going to be the same. So unfortunately, the way most of these legendary products come, uh, they're all mixed up. So they're not going to be all like one type in one in one uh, one package. At least I don't think. Well, they could be. They could be all separate. Let's see here. Interesting. Those I cannot see what they are. All right, let's open one. All right, let's get all these out of the way. Let's open one and check it out. All right, that's how we're going to find out. Got to have one of these for an unboxing. Oh, you know what? Maybe we don't because these already have a pull tab on it. Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that great? And yeah, we'll put trash in there. And... I think what we'll do is uh, I will have to stand up to show you the cards here. Move my chair, and here we have some some real nice art. Again, comic booky, yes, but still very 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 cool. Armored Xenomorph. Yep, can't read upside down. Sorry. Containment cell. Five attack points on him. Yikes! Some of these are pretty bad news. Ooh, like that. Acid for blood. Love it. Ooh, there's your lovely face hugger. Not very nice. Not the same thing. That's clone face hugger. That's just a standard card. That's not the face hugger card, but you can see, yeah, some of the art is a little on the gruesome side. So, yeah, this would probably give my daughter nightmares, although she hasn't had a nightmare yet. Oops, I'm sorry. She hasn't had a nightmare yet, so, but I'm sure... This would be bound to get her one. But, you know, she's seen the box, and she's seen me reading the rules. And uh, you see that on the roof there, on the ceiling? Uh, she sees this stuff, and she says, wow, these are cool. She's five and a half, folks. And she's not scared of this stuff. But, of course, she could just be saying that, you know? So some E. Nice stuff. So you can see it's kind of comic booky. Sure, uh, these are grunt cards here. These are the grunts. So these are only these are basically worth zero, right? And they're each have one attack point. And let's see what else we got here. Here we have our specialists. These have one recruit point each. There's a whole bunch of those, at least in that but in that uh, package. Okay, shall we open up another one? Sure, why not? This is the fun part, right? And of course, you have to smell them. Oh, they smell really, really good. Now, these ones are a little different. Uh, these have a blue back, and these cards have a black back. And these black ones, uh, these are some of the uh, alien, these are some of the objective cards. Uh, this is, let's, we won't show you these too much because we don't want to spoil the game for you folks, but these are objective cards. These are things you have to do to complete uh, the game and win. Again, we don't want to show you too much. We don't want to spoil it. Of course, I don't want to see it either. I don't want to spoil it for myself. And here's a few of some nasty aliens. Again, we don't want to spoil too much, right? We don't want to ruin it. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Again, some more cards here, Medic. Now you'll notice now that they've changed this game a little bit, and they have these additional icons here. Uh, these are basically your hit points, the bottom number, so that's how much life you have, right? Pretty standard. And the top number is uh, an attack value, uh, because there is in the advanced mode, you can actually fight your opponents and have a hidden, uh, uh, have a hidden traitor uh, amongst your crew, very similar to the uh, Paul Reiser character in Aliens. Um, 
So you might still have an objective of trying to defeat the aliens, but you also might be trying to defeat your comrades. So that's kind of a new, uh, definitely a new dynamic to the game, which could make it a lot of fun. Certainly different, if not for nothing else. Let's look at another deck here. Do, do, do. We need an unboxing song if anybody wants to write one for me. Um, um, that'd be really great. I would appreciate it. So this is a, uh, this one's different. This is a strike card. So you can see here, this value, instead of being a white number, is a red number. So this is a strike card. This is a, basically like a wound. Wounds are pretty, uh, pretty nasty in this game. And these a couple I'll take out to show you. These are the sergeants that we talked about. So you can see, um, now, this is a pretty bad example, but these are all the same. They all have a certain icon up here, like a faction they belong to. And then down here, they have different uh, coordinates. And, and if you look at the rules, you can basically, uh, if it's not your turn, I can put this down on the table and uh, draw another card to replace it in my hand. And you get this recruit point added to your, added to someone else's uh, play, uh, turn, which is kind of different dynamic that you can uh, help out your your fellow, your fellow uh, Marines. And there's a bunch of event cards in here. Again, we don't want to look at these too much because I really don't want to spoil the game for you or for myself. And again, a lot of the same. We're seeing a lot of the same things here. Uh, if I go too fast, I apologize. Um, I'll try to, I'm actually looking at the cards right side up, excuse me, upside down. I'll try to do it this way so you can see some of the art. Again, don't want to spoil it too much, right? Yeah. So again, I've been looking forward to this. Uh, my son, uh, he kind of like he likes aliens. He's not as big a fan of it as I am. I think it's just because of the age difference. I mean, I'm old enough that I remember going to see Alien in the movie when it in the movie theaters when it first came out. How many of us can say that? These are location cards. For example, oops, sorry, Hadley's Hope, right there. And everyone's favorite, the Nostromo. And of course, Fury 161. So that's kind of nifty. We've got some more different types of cards here. Try to show them to you here. Yeah, cool stuff. Ooh, that's a hazard card. Yep. Hazards are bad, obviously. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't like this guy? Jonesy. Jonesy looks pissed off. He's probably seen an alien. Stupid cat. Okay, as we move on, more aliens to deal with. Oh. There we go. Check this out. They mostly come at night. Mostly. That's Newt. Otherwise known as Rebecca, but only Timmy calls her that, right? Burke, Carter J, not a very well-liked individual in the Aliens universe. Of course, we all know how that turned out, don't we? And there's some more here. More hazards. The Beast. All kinds of cool stuff. Lots of more hazard cards. This one is, sorry, that is the cloned queen. Nice. Bunch of those. Oh, here's alien. Here's alien resurrection right here. There's the newborn. Look at that. E. Cool. And anything else interesting here? Uh, acid spray. Let me show that. Here's acid spray. That's gotta hurt. All right, let's look at some more here. So yeah, my son and I play Legendary, uh, you know, when we can. Uh, he also likes the DC deck building game, which I did in a previous video, and uh, he really likes that. But he does like the Marvel Universe too, because we all like Spider-Man. And this game, again, like I said, is very similar to it. As far as the mechanism, a couple of differences with regard to coordinate 
and where you can you uh, someone else can actually give you this card as it were to, to use on your term to get more attack value or to get more um, uh, recruit points I know we're seeing a lot of the same things here right uh, floods there you go. and it goes down you here to hold cool art though huh I love it absolutely love it I'm really excited to play this this does play solo uh, I'm almost certain it goes to five players and I'm really hoping that upper deck decides to support this game going forward and have uh, additional cards and scenarios and objectives to include because um, it'd be a shame but it seems just right out of the box the first this first box of uh, of this game they have all the movies in it so I'm not sure what they can do aside from creating new objectives that have nothing to do with the movies at all unless they go to the comic books uh, let me look through these here real quick see if we can find something different because we're seeing all about the same thing oh this is not nice massacre that's obviously bad and uh, let's see ah oh, here we go do we know who said let's book that would be Hudson Hudson said that they found a way in of course here's another Hudson line this is the Hudson deck obviously <laughs> they're coming out of the walls of course there is a word missing it was coming out of the blank walls not the F word, but different word. Here's another one, another Hudson line. Now what are we supposed to do? Yeah, let's build a campfire, sing a couple songs. So as you can see, these are uh, some really sweet art. These are all the same. Let's go forward here. Yep, so we're seeing a lot of the same things, right? Uh -huh. This is an executive avatar, the Wayland Utani Corporation logo. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of the same things. When they print out these cards, these decks, excuse me, these packages here, um, they don't put all of one type together for whatever reason. However, they come off the printing press. They um, they do. Uh, they're all mixed up. So I'm not sure what these are for. I really don't know. They're blue on one side, gray on the other. I'll have to look in the rules. They have some sort of purpose. I'm not really sure. And uh, here's a, ah, so, so here we mentioned the chest burster. This is what you get in your deck. When you get a face hugger on you and you get two turns to defeat it. And if you don't, you die. So secrets revealed. Here's a, here's a card for Captain Dallas. Is Captain Dallas and who else we got? We've got Chief Engineer Parker. Chief Engineer Parker, there he is. Oops, sorry, a little reflective. So some really really cool stuff, and and of course Bishop. Hey man, not me man. There's Bishop. All right, let's open up another one, shall we? Making a mess here. Got cards everywhere. Now, just so you know, all the time we spent on this, I still have this many to open. Yeah, there's a lot there. I know. There is a lot here, but I think we're seeing a lot of the same thing. So let's see if we can, if I can rifle through this. Here's a Ripley. Okay, with Newton in the background. We're gonna. Here's Francis, 85, Aaron, he's from Alien 3, if I'm not mistaken. That could be wrong. Some of these characters don't necessarily remember all their names. Growing in the lab. And uh, cool artwork though, definitely. Definitely not something, this is something that you have to play once the kids are in bed, uh, your young kids, uh, because definitely uh, I think they're going to be a little scared of this. 
Although, like I said, my daughter says she doesn't care, but I don't believe her. All right. Go. Nice. Another one. So you can see it's all comic book art. Still really cool. Really nice to look at. Getting bored yet? Nah, you're not getting bored, are you? Again, we're seeing all the same thing. Yeah, it's Ripley. So yeah, I mean, again, a lot of these cards were, you know, there are multiples, uh, different characters, um, different abilities. Uh, there is a variant in here, uh, in the rule book, uh, where you can play uh, all the Ripley characters from all four movies. So instead of having four different characters, you can have all four Ripleys if you want. If you're a big Ripley fan, you could do that if you wanted to. Again, we're seeing a lot of the same things. All these cards are distributed across. And you see there's Bishop again, right? So they're all distributed across all these packs. And then you just have to go through them and sort them out and put them all together. Um, the other variant that's in the book, and I nearly keeled over when I read it, but they say you can do it. And you know what I'm going to say. If you are a fan of Legendary, you can put the Marvel characters into this universe and vice versa. I'm not sure why you want to do that aside from just trying it to see what it would be like. But I don't think I have any desire to have Wolverine try to slice one of these guys to shreds. As cool as that would be. I don't know. Uh, let me see. Chestburster. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of the same thing. So, so there you go. That is a lot of cards. Oy. But that is Legendary Encounters and a ton of cards, as you can see. Uh, I'm excited to play this. Um, I don't think I'm going to do a run-through of this, uh, a full-on run-through. Maybe. Who knows? I think some other people might beat me to it. Maybe Tim Norris. Um, I think he's actually already done a run-through through, through for this by the time this gets to be posted on YouTube. Um, but there you go. A lot of cards. 600 cards in the base set. I really hope that Upper Deck supports this and um, comes out with additional cards um, because I also just picked up uh, Paint Town Red from the Marvel game. So I hope they have other sets for this going forward. They say they're going to, uh, which is good. Um, like I said, this plays similar to Legendary. So when you've played Legendary before, you'll notice that the rule set is, is similar. It'll make all make sense. But there are some significant differences. Uh, like I said, when the cards come out, they are, when the aliens come out, the baddies, they're upside down. So they'd be upside down. I'll try to find an example here. Let's just pick this one, for example. It would come out of the hive upside down. And then you'd have to pay a certain amount of attack to reveal it. And then, okay, now you know what you're dealing with. And then when it comes down here, these are all going to fight you every turn until you kill them off. So getting defeated in this game uh, looks pretty easy. Um, the, the playthrough I saw from Gen Con makes this game look really, really hard to win, which is cool, which is great. Um, I'll probably definitely play this game solo first, and, uh, and then my son, uh, him and I will play once and um, a couple of times to see how it is. And that's it. That's our little unboxing, my first one. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Saw some cool stuff here. Um, I hope to do more in the future. It all depends. I can't get games as soon as they come out. Uh, but I lucked out on this one. I saw it. It was in stock, so I grabbed it. And this just came out at Gen Con. So this is really, really cool. I'm excited. So that's it. That is... Wasn't ready here. <laughs> that is Legendary Encounters, the deck-building game from our friends at Upper Deck. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. And that's pretty much going to be it for this episode. We're not going to go back to me on camera. We're just going to end with this, I think. And we'll see you next time. And thanks for watching. And please uh, subscribe to my channel. Give me thumbs up or give me thumbs down if you didn't like it. Send me comments, questions. Please, I'd love to hear from you. All right? Thanks. Take care. We'll see you soon.